and gentlemen, for those who are here, for those who are joining us live online, it is now time to talk the road to economic stability with the CEO of the Middle East Business Unit at PepsiCo. Amrashek heads up the operating cluster within PepsiCo for Africa, the Middle East and South Asia. This newly formed cluster brings snacks and nutrition businesses together, which we're going to talk about in the session as well, with the franchise beverages businesses. Amr serves as the co-chair of the U.S.-Saudi Business Council, U.S. Chamber. He is a member of the Multinational Companies Business Group, Regional Presidents Forum, as well as other distinguished associations. And in 2021, he was ranked amongst the top 15 leaders in the MENA region by Forbes for spearheading regional success for PepsiCo. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Amr Sheikh. Welcome, Amr. So good to thank have you with us. Thank you, Sally. Pleasure to be here. Thank you. We are excited to have you here, um, but particularly because PepsiCo has some really important partnerships, particularly with Expo 2020 yeah. Dubai. So talk to us about these partnerships and how they're bolstering the growth objectives yeah. for Pepsi. Yeah, you know, Expo 2020 is really at the intersection of creativity, innovation, cultures, and where really humanity is coming together for the first time in what we soon w would hope to be a post-pandemic world. So we're proud to be the food and beverages uh, partner for the Expo. Um, am amazing, the infrastructure that's around us. And for those of us listening who have not been to Dubai or the Expo yet, I, I think it's a must-see. Um, it's an amazing place. And if I talk about our engagement in terms of um, wh what are we bringing as innovation, what are we bringing as experiences, and some of the commitments that we've made. So let me s first start with our innovations uh, that we exclusively develop for Expo 2020 in Dubai. Um, starting with our beautiful Aquafina water machine. And um, it is one right outside the room and, I, and you and I had an opportunity I to try it. I had not used this thing. <laughs> and I, I kind of saw it there, but didn't think a lot of it, to be honest with you, until yeah. you came along and went, have you used this? And yeah. I was like, no, and I was really surprised. Yeah. Tell, tell, tell the audience more so about this. So think hydration, yeah. think sustainability. And think that the water that you want, the way you want it, is coming out of a beautifully looking machine. So, um, y you know, the example I would give you is we have specially QR code enabled bottles. You can activate these machines using the QR codes and then you get unlimited refill. You can select whether you want still or sparkling. You, s you can select the flavor you want, the temperature you want, the quantity of hydration you want. Um, and then the machine will remember that through that QR code and will give you the exact same drink every time, irrespective of which machine you use here at the Expo. So, so the amazing thing is it will also tell you the footprint, your sustainability footprint, in terms of by using this machine and refillable bottle, how many plastic bottles have you saved, and what percentage of hydration goal are you meeting with this drink? So again, works on you know two liters a day sort of consumption. So if you're only having half a liter, we'll tell you, hey, you need to drink more. I love that. I love so that because we, we all need the these. reminder, don't we, we to do. drink more we water, do. and it just makes it so easy, and it just it's brilliant, you know. And, and that brings us to the next point, which is all about sustainability. And this is you know really a very clever idea, but you know sustainable development is of course a key goal for the world's biggest companies and for, for the rest of us as well. But talk to us a bit more about um, that particular strategy and what's yeah. driving at PepsiCo. Yeah, you know, uh, sustainability has to be uh, in everything we do. It's no longer about something that you do on the side. It has to be core of what we do. And, and I think um, with Expo 2020, we're, we're bringing in some amazing sustainable innovation, but even outside Expo 2020, we're doing that. So first, from an innovation point of view, we launched our still water in a can, something that, that we have it in front of us. Uh, so again, it's a sustainable package. It's infinitely recyclable. Yeah. So, so that's a small part of changing our, our mind frame from going from plastic to cans. Then I think if you, if you think about a broader sustainability objective, it has to be really in everything that we do. F so from how we source the ingredients to how we make and how we sell products. Now, y you know, I was reading somewhere that by 2050, 
we're going to have about 10 billion people on this planet. I mean, this is the only planet we have, right? So you need sustainable food systems. And really to demonstrate that commitment, we recently launched a, what we call our PepsiCo Positive Initiative. So it has three pillars. We're starting with sustainable in agriculture, call it positive agriculture. So it is about uh, using regenerative practices to our agriculture footprint. And mind you, we, we have seven million acres uh, you know, where we grow potatoes and other crops globally. So using regenerative practices to make sure that agricultural land continue to be used. Then we have the second pillar is positive value chain. So it's about using sustainable uh, energy, you know, renewable energy sources, uh, developing positive water balance, uh, and really making sure that we are being conscious, energy conscious, and protecting our natural resources in everything we do. So water, climate, plastic is the other big linchpin. So we're committed to reduce the amount of virgin plastic we use by 50% per serving by 2025, and to really introduce a recycled PET uh, you know, uh, you know, in our packaging as well. And then the last pillar of this is positive choices. So it's about making sure that we are providing, um, I would say we're smuggling in nutrition into your everyday food and beverages uh, that you enjoy. Uh, making sure that this, you know, example could be water with vitamin fortified or g using Gatorade to provide sports nutrition that fuels the athletes and all of us. Listen, I'm waiting for Pepsi to just be healthy, you know, <laughs> and, and then you've, you've got me completely. But, you know, on the sustainability uh, uh, strategy, uh, PepsiCo actually just re recently launched something called the Greenhouse Accelerator, MENA Sustainability Edition. This is brilliant. Talk to us about this yeah. and why you've launched this program in the Middle East. Yeah, you know, it's, it's about tapping into that ecosystem that the entrepreneurs of MENA region have sort of, uh, you know, they're all dabbling into various innovations, business models, uh, and, so, and you know, so we're trying to figure out well, which one of those innovations they're working on that can really help us drive our sustainable food system agenda. So I would be the first one to admit that as a global company, we've got unbelievable amount of resources that are tackling this agenda, mm. but we don't have all the answers. So you really have to tap into the community that you operate in, work with these really bright startup businesses to understand what, what do they have, how can that help us drive our agenda. So what we've done is the MENA edition of Greenhouse Accelerator, we launched this in November, inviting MENA startups to sort of share their ideas with us, what is it that they're working on. We would select the top 10 ideas, in fact, we're gonna be announcing that in a couple of weeks time, which are the top 10 companies, and then we will work with them, coach them, mentor them, guide them, and really select the winning idea, and there's a cash prize associated with it which will help them launch that business. See, it, that's fantastic, because this is what you need to drive sustainability, innovation. And you know, the, to see PepsiCo encouraging innovation in that way, particularly for the startup ecosystem as well, is really brilliant. We're excited yeah. to see who the companies are that you are going to be working with as well. But, you know, let's talk about um, the impact of, of the pandemic. You know, every company has had yeah. to obviously deal with it in a different way. Talk to us about the changes that you've made uh, at PepsiCo because of it. Yeah. First, I would say that, um, e you know, the uncertainty due to the pandemic is going to be with us for a while, right? So uh, it's going to impact all the economies. Um, we're very fortunate to be living in, in a place, you know, where most of the GCC economies have proven to be very resilient. Mm. And they've done a great job of balancing restrictions with uh, making sure that, you know, the commercial, um, you know, in the economy stays afloat. Uh, and they've done that through helping businesses, helping individuals, uh, and we have been no exception to that. So, so we've also worked closely with the government and NGOs in, in initially making sure that people, marginalized communities, had access to food, you know, uh, supporting them in, you know, during the crisis phase, making sure the small businesses stay afloat. Um, and now um, all our actions are being guided by six principles that we developed early on. And I think there lies a, a template um, which I'm sure other businesses are using or can, can learn and can use that. So we said, look, first we have to be people-centric. 
So we have to make sure that we're looking after the well-being of our people, we're keeping our employees safe, our consumers safe, uh, and our sales force safe that has to go out in the market every single day. Um, and then we said we need to be consumer-centric. So not just exciting the consumer with our brands, but also working closely with them to support the events and activities that they're passionate about. Then we said we have to be customer centric. So if you think about it in the height of pandemic, the biggest challenge our customers had was with the stocking that was going on, can you as a supplier continue to make sure that our stocks are shelved, our, our shelves are stocked properly uh, with the right beverages and food? So I think we, we did a great job of working closely with them, listening to them, meeting their needs, and really bringing our best-in-class global capability to them. We also wanted to be community steward in this time of need. Um, the example I would give you is when Lebanon experienced that unfortunate event uh, in August uh, 2020, we were amongst the first multinationals to announce um, you know, our aid program for the residents and citizens of Beirut. Uh, so I think, I think y we, have, we have present with our consumer, customers, community. And we have done that by being agile. So the first thing you do is you look at the bureaucracy that exists in the company. In a time of crisis, there's no time for that. So you have to simplify and you have to make your decision-making agile. And we have to be prudent about it. So th the companies also love their five-year planning, three-year planning, one-year plan. So at PepsiCo, we realized that our one-year plan very quickly went out the window, and we really managed the business on a far more frequent basis. Uh, the example I would give you is when Lebanon, which is still going through an economic crisis with devaluations and, and the currency fluctuations, you couldn't really plan three months out. You really had to plan the next two weeks, the next four weeks, on a rolling basis to continue to service your, your, your customers. So my takeaway from all this, and, and for, for those of you, to you listening, it would be this, this was a this crisis, once in a hundred year crisis, but it also provided opportunities for us to look at where our strengths lies, where we have opportunities to do better, and how do we mitigate the risk exposure that we have, mm. and, and really reinvent ourselves to be the organization of the future. And in, you know, as the previous gentleman was talking, Saad was talking about digitalization, you know, overnight, people are at home. They're not going to the stores to buy, right? We, um, in Dubai, were given a window, you know, one hour or two hour window to do your grocery shopping. So we had to figure out how to get our products to their homes very quickly. So that means you needed to forge a new partnership and make sure that your existing partnerships are strengthened. Yes. So great opportunity for us to reinvent our business model and do things differently. Absolutely, and um, it, I wanna ask you about uh, leadership and really uncertain times as well, and what does it take yeah. for a leader you know, in that situation? W what kind of qualities do they need to have to navigate through something like that that's unprecedented? That's a great question. Look, I, you know, if, you, if I flip that question into what, what are our teams looking for, right? First and foremost, in a time of crisis, they're looking for reassurance. They're looking for the leader and the team to be able to stand up in front of them and say, we got your back. We understand what's going on. We will work with you, and we will make sure that first and foremost, we'll keep you safe and close to your families, right? I think they're also looking to be inspired. So, so this is your opportunity to stand up and say, and here's how we're going to manage this crisis. Here's how we're going to get out of this crisis. Here's how we're going to take this business to a new level. And at the end of the day, it's not just about the bottom line, but it's about our lifeline. It's about making sure that how do we care for humanity and the communities that we operate in. I think our people also want to be engaged. So again, from, from going from caring to inspiration to how do you engage them in your decision making they, they want to help drive the business they want to help service the community I, again going back to the lebanon crisis our employees in lebanon were the first ones to say how can we help what can we do differently i, I think as a leader we also need to make sure that when you're having these conversation people in the room are diverse and we're being inclusive and diversity is not just about 
you know, getting the right ethnicity or getting the right uh, gender in the room. It's really about making sure that their voices are heard and their opinions are on the table. No, look, if 50% of our consumers are males, are females, and 100% of decision makers are males, uh, that doesn't work. You need to make sure that you have at least 50% of the, the audience, the decision-making team um, that represents uh, in, 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 you know, the females. Uh, and, and of course, you can extend that to ethnicity, you can extend that to nationalities. Uh, you're not going to have an all-American team running the Egypt business, right? It just doesn't make sense, right? Mm. So why would we do that when it comes to gender? Absolutely, absolutely. All incredibly uh, important points. But I just love what you just said about it's not just about the bottom line, it's about our lifeline as well, making sure that your people, your customers as well, are at the centre of it all. Uh, we have questions coming in. This one from Rizwan in India. He's asking, how do you see PepsiCo evolving over the course of the near future? What's happening? Uh. What's on the horizon? Rizwan, great question. Look, I, th I think we're going to be... Um, evolving with our strategy called winning with purpose. So let me address winning. Winning means we're going to be deliver the top tier results that the street expects from us, right? We're going to um, continue to outcompete our peers and be the best in class in what we operate. But we're also going to do it the right way. We're going to make sure that we are caring for the communities, we're caring for our employees, and we're taking sustainable means uh, in everything we do. And I think this um, uh, PEP positive agenda that we've launched, um, I, I personally believe that we're amongst the first one to really have such a comprehensive end-to-end -end transformation framework in place. And I would encourage people to g get on PepsiCo website and take a look at it. Because I think that can be the blueprint for a lot of us who are really trying to figure out how we help as individuals. So whether you're a one person or one family trying to do the right thing for the environment or you're running your own business in any part of the world. R really, this is how you learn. You learn from the best practices out there and you try to then uh, impact those in your sphere of influence. Mm. Anthony from Saudi Arabia, he's uh, texted with the question, uh, what do you think uh, uh, has uh, the successful organization of Expo 2020, what has that given the world? I think it's, it's shown um, tolerance, mm -hmm. it's shown um, acceptability of so many cultures, so many um, countries coming together, but one objective, one objective only, right? You know, to, to showcase the best they can and work with our host country, our U, you know, UAE, um, to really put on a show for the world. I, I think, you know, what I love to say, and I walked, uh, you know, the streets of Expo now for four or five months, and I still probably have only seen about 15, 20% of what this has to offer. But if you think about from food, from entertainment, from the country pavilions, to the shows, to entertainment, concerts, culture, there is so much to do and see. And, and I think if you're bringing the best minds, uh, best global minds here, think about the potential of the conversations that will start here but they will continue long after Expo has come and gone. So to me, therein lies the power of the Expo, is to really bring the people together and see then where their ideas take them. Mm, absolutely. Really incredible to see you know, what is happening with Expo, the partnerships that are happening with PepsiCo. Amr Sheikh, it's been an absolute pleasure to have you here as Thank part you. of the ABLF Talks for a fascinating discussion. Thank you so thank you. much. My pleasure. Ladies and gentlemen, thank please thank Amr Sheikh. Thank you. Amazing. Thank you, Sally. Thank you so much. And coming up next, we have a very special panel that features some of the top media leaders here in the region, as well as uh, we're going to be talking finance and banking too, and the digitization of these industries. Stay with us here on the ABLF.